Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Whew, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for another time where you sit at your feet and study your word. Uh, this is the 12th of March of 2021, and the title is A Question Time. First, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to keep it quiet outside, cool and quiet inside. I ask that only your word goes through and you re you touch this recording until it until all of your message is, is recorded. I ask you to touch my eyesight, my speech, and my understanding, and give us all revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Father, put us all in a hedge of protection and saturated with the blood of Christ when we're studying your word in Jesus' name. First off, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. And he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now we got to ask, how could Jesus say that? Now let's look at this. This is Holy Spirit interpretation. The things of this world are temporal. The things of God are eternal. Remember that. So um, Jesus gave his believers authority. Okay? So the authority comes when you accept it. Christ is your Savior. All right? Now think about this. The disciples had authority to, and power to cast out demons, to heal the sick, and to raise the dead, okay? And then you, you ask, how is this possible? Now let's look at Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20. And it'll tell you, thank you, Holy Spirit. And, uh, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And ye go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe all things, Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, we got a couple problems here with translations, okay, with the translators, right? Because first off, this word power should have been translated authority. Now, when the translators were translating it, they interchanged authority and power for that, uh, that original word. And that shouldn't have been so because it brings confusion. Keep that in mind. And God willing, I'll do a study on those two words and then you'll see more clearly what i'm speaking about uh but then on the when it uses world here in verse 20 it should have been age because we live in the age of the, the church age right now so this is what it should have been so like i said just commu it's confusion there all right um and i'm going to go through this pretty quickly because of time so uh, I'm going to make this as simple as I can because literally I'm a simple person. So after accepting Christ as your Savior, he gives you authority. But in, in most cases, and not all cases, you have to ask to be baptized with Holy Spirit. All right? And this is, this is mainly because it's a spiritual gift. And like Jesus said throughout his ministry, when people, he was healing people or people were touching him, He's be it unto you as your faith, or as you believe, be it unto you, right? So it's even Mark, uh, what was that one, Mark 5, verse 36, when Jesus was going to, uh, when Jesus was going with the, uh, the centurion, I think it is, with the 12-year-old daughter that was on her deathbed, and then his, his uh, servant came to him and said, don't trouble master no more, she's dead. Well, Jesus told him, uh, don't worry, just believe. Only believe. See what I mean? And literally, um, we have 365 days in our calendar year. And the word don't fear in one form or another is 365 times. So it's one time, one time a day for each day of the year. Do not fear. Woo, God thought of everything. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome creator. Praise you, Father. So, um, so like I said, this is where power comes from. So another question is, how is it possible for a certainty to know that you are spirit infilled? In other words, you got the gift of tongues and the spirit lives inside of you. How do we know this for a certainty? It's simple. And the short answer is when you are praising God, his Holy Spirit gets excited and you will speak in another language that you hadn't learned. Now you let the Holy Spirit speak when and as often as he wishes. Go into your secret place. And here's another thing here. 
uh, which I didn't put down here, but Psalms 91, verse 1, the secret place. Okay, that secret place is anywhere that you're speaking in tongues. Because literally, Satan and his demons cannot understand what you're saying because that's communication between you and your father. It's pure communication. So if you're in your car, if you're at work, if you're standing in a uh, doctor's office, if you're in the doctor's office, rather, if you're standing in the bank, if you're sitting in your vehicle, if you're in your house, what, wherever you're at, that is your secret place when you're, in, when you're using the gift of tongues, or in other words, letting Spirit, Holy Spirit speak through you. So that's your secret place. There's another Holy Spirit revelation. That's a key to opening heaven. Hallelujah. So um, let's look at uh, Ephesians 1, chap uh, chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. And this is because you now are a temple of the Holy Spirit after you have been baptized with Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 12 to 14. That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, and whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the uh, uh, that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnesty of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession of the praise of his glory. Now that possession we're talking about is the body, right? And that word earnestly is proof that you were, you were uh, sealed with the Holy Spirit. And that way you know, and no demon in hell, no person on earth can tell you, you don't have eternal life with your Creator and with your Savior, Christ Jesus. See, there's a difference. Once you know that, once you've been infilled with His Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is in turn the gift of the tongues, which is how you know that you've been infilled with the Holy Spirit. See, your whole life, will be changed. And just like uh, Revelation chapter 12, and I didn't mean to go here, so I don't have it wrote down up this early, but uh, chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they lived not their life to the death. That's how you know that you've been infilled and that you have eternal life, because you've totally been changed. Now, don't, don't forget, you know, don't get me wrong. Yes, we have to live in this corruptible world and then in this corruptible body. But if you sin, we have an advocate with Christ. And we are even told that in the word that uh, you say, Father, forgive me in the name of Jesus. Cover me and wash me with the blood of Christ. And your sins are wiped away. Psalms 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed your sins. Whoo, hallelujah. And I'll put that on here, too. In the description, Psalms 103, 12. Hallelujah. Love it. Love the Word of God. Okay? So, um, and now, let's look at what Jesus did when he was being tempted in the wilderness. And that can be found in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Chapter tw uh, Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13. Now, I want you to go there, because I don't have enough time to go and read all that. But, I want you to read it, because then you'll understand. Jesus was tempted by Satan... After he had fasted, which means he was very tired and weak, he had fasted without, it doesn't say if he had water or not, but it's fast without food, we know that. So for 40 days and 40 nights, okay? And you can live that long without food. Now, um, it's different in different climates as to how much water you would need to live for, and for how long before you expire. That's a different story. But right now we're talking about, we know that he was tested when he was extremely tired and hungry and weak. Satan tested him in the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, and lust of flesh. The thing, three things that our bodies and our humans, the humans on earth, can be tested and are tested by Satan and the demonic, right? So, to say, I said that to say that he told him to get behind him. He gave us that authority. We have the same authority and power that Christ has. We can tell demonic, we can tell Satan, get behind me, get out of here, leave. And they got to leave because the name of Jesus, and now your name is written in the book of the Lamb's Book of Life. Now they're afraid of you. And then when you're praying in tongues, which means they don't understand you, then that they're afraid because when you're praying, automatically you're a torch in the darkness. They come running. But when you're speaking in tongues, they come running, but then they run really fast back the other way because because you now are covered with the blood of Christ. You're saturated with the blood of Christ. That's how Father God sees you. 
when you ask for forgiveness. So when you're praying in tongues, your torch, they run to it, but then they have to stop and run back the other way because they see the blood of Christ on you. It's as simple as that. Praise God for Holy Spirit revelation. Hallelujah. 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 So uh, let's look at that proof here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. What? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are Christ's. Hallelujah for that. Another thing I want to discuss real quick here is labels. When you, go, when you have an ailment, first thing you ought to do is go to Father God in Jesus' name. Ask what the sin is. Ask what the problem is. And then pray against that and you'll get your healing. Okay? Guarantee it. Now what we do normally, and we should not do it. This is a exhortation. This is ed this exhortation for you doing this. And this is edification for your spirit. You listen to me. Now listen real close. When we get an ailment... What do we do? Boom! We run to the doctor. Oh, I feel this way. I feel so. He gives you a diagnosis. Guarantee that diagnosis, which is a label, has a demon attached. And when you accept that diagnosis or that label, that demon gets indwelled in your psyche. It gets indwelled, which we have cellular memory, which is another altogether uh, study. But it gets indwelled in you and it takes root. And then if you don't rebuke it right away, it gets harder to get rid of it because that the roots start digging down into your soul. Now, what I'm saying is as soon as you hear that from the doctor, rebuke it right away immediately. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't have that. You say this in your head. Don't say it out loud. The doctor will get offended and never talk to you again <laughs> or kick you out of his firm because uh, being out of his care because you are going against his... Uh, diagnosis against his uh, treatment plan we know that now that's the world we live in but as soon as you hear that people today they take it and they believe it and they never cast it out so there you go these demons they just once that cracks made in your spirit more demons attach even jesus said the when he uh, healed this person he said go and sin no more because the worst thing will come upon you and then he gave the example of the house being swept and garnished you can go look at that and um, then, you know, the demons are cast out. It's empty. But the person didn't renew his mind daily, didn't renew his mind with the things of God, didn't have the Holy Spirit indwelling in him. So the demons come back. They're tired because right now they're cast out. They're walking in dry places looking for a house that they can go into or an individual they can go into. They can't find once they come back to you. And he says, oh, wait a minute. So the demon remembers you cast him out. So wait a minute. So then he goes, because when he's seen, he sees it all swept and garnished and cleaned, but it's empty. So he says, wait a minute, I can't enter again because you already cast me out once. So he goes and finds seven more spirits more wicked to them, and they go and enter again. And that's how Jesus said, that's how he can, and that's why he said, the state of that man is, is worse than the first state. That's why he said, go and sin no more. And Paul says, renew your mind daily. We got to do that. Hallelujah. Study the word, pray in tongues. Seek all the spiritual gifts. Paul said, seek earnestly the, the uh, spiritual gifts. All the gifts desire earnestly, he says. Okay? So you don't, re you don't uh, take that label. You immediately cast it out. Now, being a believer and knowing this, you can go back wherever, you're, wherever you decide your private space is, wherever you start speaking in tongues. Remember, I just told you that is your secret place. But you go into prayer right away after you leave the doctor's office. Or before, you can talk in tongues, like I said, nobody's going to hear you in your mind. Go in your car, start speaking immediately against that, cast it out, rebuke it. Again, rebuke it as soon as you hear it when you're in the car, rebuke it. Ask Father God to heal you, because you're going to right now immediately repent of whatever uh, he's showing you. Holy Spirit will show you. Keep on asking Holy Spirit to show you your dark spots, because you don't want nothing in this life or the next to hinder you from your with your... Uh, with your relationship with Christ or with Father God. See, so remember to do that. So you remember immediately you start uh, rebuking that. Then you start praying to God and, and uh, asking for forgiveness, asking him to have the Holy Spirit fill, to come fill every area the demons have left. And then don't go back to that sin and guarantee you will be healed. Guarantee it once the sin's gone, once that demon's out of your life, whatever the case is. 
So remember, it says in Matthew 7, verse 7. I might have time enough to go to it here. Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8. He says, seek, ask, and knock. Right? You continue to do that because the original language is continue until you get an answer. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh me receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh it shall be opened. Now remember that. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of his testimony. Hallelujah. So now you know how to get the power. And you know how to get the authority. And you know how to keep it. And you know what to do to keep it. Stay humble. Stay in a repentance. Stay in the words. Stay speaking in tongues. Speak in tongues often. Let Holy Spirit speak through you. Praise God. Always play and praise me. Play and praise me as much as you can. Uh, play praise CDs. Listen to the word of God while you're sleeping even. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you to upload this video uh, with no hiccups. And I ask you, Father, to touch the device again. That it, can, that it just works properly. Father, and it goes where it needs to go. Send your Holy Spirit out. It needs to go out in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for, for your word. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy.